Hello, and welcome to another Purple Insider Extra. Matthew Collar here, along with Sam Ekstrom. A reminder, go listen to the Purple Insider podcast wherever you get your podcasts or use the link below. Check out our written work, purpleinsider.substack.com, where Sam, I wrote several different things about how the Minnesota Vikings decided not to pick Mac Jones at number 14 and instead went with Kellen Mond. And it seems like their motivation was they were looking for a mobile quarterback. In fact, our friend Courtney Cronin from ESPN reported that they were looking at Justin Fields and would have taken him at 14 had Fields dropped. Do you think it's the right process for the Vikings to have passed on the pocket quarterback to focus on a mobile quarterback, even if he was taken in the third round instead of the first? Yeah, I think in general I do. And it was something I talked about in podcasts leading up to this. That's just the way the position is going, but that doesn't guarantee that you're going to hit on that quarterback. I mean, I think the Packers you know, looked for sort of a Mahomes archetype when they took Jordan Love, and we have no clue if that's going to work out at all for them. You know, a lot of mobile quarterbacks just don't have the the savvy to read a defense, to sort of engineer drives. Um, when they're forced to kind of use their arm and actually throw in the pocket. Because even if you're mobile, you still have to kind of sit there sometimes and make a throw like a pocket passer. You can't improvise every single time. So all that said, you, you know, you watch some of the highlight reels of Kellen Mond, which can be dangerous. And you see him barreling through defenses on some of those read options and shedding tacklers, outrunning people to the end zone. And you look at that and you say, I want that. Uh, what you don't see in those highlight reels are times when he was mechanical, are times when he was, you know, not getting to his second and third reads. I think that can be a little bit tricky. And we also, you know, we, there's a lot of evidence about Kellen Mond. He was playing for four years, and someone like Mac Jones, really only played one year at Alabama, might have a little more ceiling. Um, so I, I'm a little bit torn. I do like that they're going to be different, though, than Kirk Cousins. Uh, just because I think we've seen the limitations that he offers, and you don't want that again, assuming unless Mac Jones has unbelievable like arm talent and recognition and football IQ, um, unless he has those things, and I'm not convinced he does, then you might have another a similar situation. So at least now you're you're trying to raise the floor by getting someone with a little more athleticism, and you hope that they can have then the arm talent. Uh, that would make them a, a pretty dangerous quarterback. I think if they wanted Justin Fields, that they should have gone and got Justin Fields instead of getting the discount version of Justin Fields, which is Kellen Mond, because Fields is the guy, to me, of all the quarterbacks in the draft, aside from Trevor Lawrence, I even think there's a case for this, maybe has the highest ceiling. I mean, th those first couple of quarterbacks, I mean, even Trey Lance goes into this, they all have extremely, extremely high ceilings, and maybe Mac Jones is, is not as high. But I look at it as this was a very special draft for athletic quarterbacks that we rarely see. A lot of years, I think Mac Jones would have been the number one overall pick, and here's my evidence. Joe Burrow was the year before, and those two are very similar. And I think in terms of Mac Jones, People act like this guy is Tom Brady level athleticism. You know, we've all seen that picture of Brady in the baggy shirt at the NFL Combine. Mac Jones is a much better athlete than that. He ran a much quicker 40 time than Kirk Cousins did once upon a time. And I was impressed with his in the pocket movement. And I think when you look at the league, even last year, it's still a 50 50 split between pocket quarterbacks and those who run. And as you mentioned, not all running quarterbacks, <clears throat> Mitch Trubisky, mm -hmm. end up turning out to be franchise quarterbacks. I think that what Mac Jones would have given the Vikings is an answer for moving on from Kirk Cousins and someone that they could build a very similar offense around only with a lot more cap space to work with. And maybe it turns out like a Jared Goff situation in Los Angeles, which I think all Vikings fans would take back-to-back -back years of top offenses, a trip to the Super Bowl, you can't guarantee that with any quarterback that you draft. It's just that the odds of a first-round quarterback versus a third-rounder, to me, are are vastly different. That a, a lot of first-round quarterbacks change the trajectory of franchises, where third-rounders, it's Russell Wilson and then a lot of people that nobody's heard of. So as much as I do like Kellen Mond, like you said, there's a lot to get excited about. It's, history is really not on his side. It, it's interesting because... Mond does not necessarily fit what the Vikings currently do on offense. And it suggests that the Vikings would be willing to build things around 
their quarterback down the road if the current coaching staff is still here. Like I don't, I don't think Mike Zimmer particularly loved the mobility of Case Keenum. Like he didn't like the improvisation all the time, which kind of led to some risky plays and, and gave him a heart attack and an ulcer now and then, even though it was really fun to watch and, and got him out of a lot of jams. Mike Zimmer's kind of a risk-averse coach when it comes to the quarterback position. So this would stretch him if he's forced to to kind of look at the offense with Kellen Mond and say, okay, we're going to have to be, you know, to go ahead, Kellen, like do your thing. Like that's a very important piece of this. He has to empower a mobile quarterback to do those things. He can't just make him like a statuesque pocket passer. He's going to have to like kind of let go of the reins and let him do what he does best. And that's being athletic and that's being, you know, able to spin out of a sack and then throwing kind of away from his body down the field. That's just part of the deal. That's something Kirk Cousins does not do at all. Um, so I, I think if Kellen Mond is your quarterback in two years, I don't know if Mike Zimmer is the coach, um, but I guess that's to be determined in the future. I think Kellen Mond in his athletic profile taking him really tells us that they want something different and they believe for the future they're going to need something different, which makes for kind of an uncomfortable situation for Kirk Cousins because Sean Mannion was a very Cousins-like backup and so was Trevor Simeon before. And now you have someone with a different skill set. I do very strongly agree, though, with the Vikings offensive staff that advised Rick Spielman on this pick. And they said, look, if you have a great athlete in a rollout, in a bootleg offense that runs a lot of play actions, you could do some special things with that running quarterback. And so from that perspective, even though third round picks have not worked out super often in the NFL, I think this was the right guy to go for. If you were going to pick a quarterback in, in the middle rounds, don't make it Davis Mills. Don't make it Kyle Trask. Make it someone who might have some more special abilities, or even if there are some shortcomings in throwing the ball, that he can make up for those with his legs. So we'll see how these play out. But like you said, we're going to be watching Mac Jones, Justin Fields in the division, Justin Fields for a very long time. This has been another purple insider extra reminder, the full longer conversations go to wherever you get your podcasts, type in purple insider. We'll be there for you.